In its long history, the Dakar Rally has seen its fair share of F1 drivers compete. Fernando Alonso in the Toyota Hilux, Jackie X in the high-tech Porsches, and Jean-Louis Lesser in his very successful homemade buggies, to name a few. But in the 80s, two vehicles were entered in the Dakar, not by F1 drivers, but by entire F1 teams. The British Tolman and Italian Minardi both ventured far outside their comfort zones and developed purpose-built rally-rate vehicles of their own. Both teams weren't exactly world championship material in F1, so let's find out if their Dakar adventures were more successful. The first Formula 1 team to enter the Dakar Rally was Minardi. The infamous Italian team entered Formula 1 in 1985 after competing in Formula 2 since 1980. They joined the sport right as the turbo era set off. The brand new technology, the lack of funds and overall inexperience made Minardi anything but competitive. Instead of focusing entirely on F1, founder Giancarlo Minardi had set his sights on entering the Dakar Rally as well. So while the F1 car was struggling to even qualify, work began on preparing a vehicle for the 1986 rally. The most obvious way of participating in the Dakar is to take it easy on your first try and start off small and pick a pretty basic Land Rover for example to start off with. But this was Minardi, so obviously they decided to build a behemoth of a truck instead. To make matters worse, they didn't even pick any of the established brands and went with something called a Construzione Veicoli Speciali FM2230 the type of truck usually found in industrial zones or construction sites. It was a spare chassis that belonged to a friend of Giancarlo Minardi, who had his own construction company. The truck's industrial origin did mean that it was very strong and more than capable of surviving the harsh African terrain, and its four-wheel steering made it very agile. So what Minardi focused on was equipping it with the basic necessities like an external roll gauge and crane to help lift each of the four big heavy spare wheels. They also tried to get the most power out of the 8-cylinder Iveco turbo diesel engine. To top it all off, the truck was given the trademark bright yellow Minardi livery, which had the unfortunate effect of making it look like a dump truck. But looks can be deceiving, as somewhat out of character for Minardi, that truck ended up being one of the fastest and most competitive in its class. The 420 horsepower strong engine with an immense amount of torque pushed a 7.4 meter long giant up to a speed of 140 km an hour. After six stages, they found themselves in second position ahead of several high-profile brands. But eventually, the lack of experience that haunted them in F1 soon showed up in the truck as well in stage 7. Giancarlo Minardi himself explained that the electrical wiring was suboptimal, specifically where the wires ran through the truck. Somehow a fire had started because of it, and no matter what the crew tried, it couldn't be put out. What looked like an impressive podium finish and maybe even a victory on debut soon went up in flames. All that was left of the truck after the fire was its bare chassis and the roll cage. It was a total loss. Minardi would never return to Dakar again and instead fully focus on Formula 1. The next year, a new F1 constructor would appear at the start line, that of Ted Tolman. Tolman, like Minardi, was a backmarker Formula 1 team that's mostly known for giving Ayrton Senna his F1 debut in 1984. The Brazilian's impressive wet weather drive in the underpowered TG184 is still talked about today. After selling the team to Benetton in 1986, Ted Tolman wanted to continue racing but do it himself, in a completely different environment. He was fascinated by the Dakar Rally, so in 1987 he started off small by entering the rally in a Range Rover. The adventure didn't last long though as part of his crew got arrested in Algeria and Tolman was forced to retire. Nevertheless, experience was gained and used for the creation of the team's own bespoke rally raid car. They took major inspiration from Peugeot, who used their band Group B Peugeot 205 T16 as a base. They reinforced and lengthened the chassis for added high-speed stability and detuned the engine for reliability. It was an instant success as the car won 10 stages in its debut and started the long period of Peugeot Dakar dominance. Tolman applied the same principle to a different Group B racer, the MG Metro. It too now had a reinforced and longer chassis. The V6 engine was replaced by a 3.9-liter Rover V8 engine. It produced less horsepower than the original V6, but was less stressed and in theory more reliable. The car was now dubbed the Tolman TG88 Raider and proved to be pretty fast, but it never got to show its true potential as its Dakar only lasted one stage. It made it to the finish line no problem, but the crew's support truck arrived way too late and got disqualified. With no technical support to rely on, Tolman once again retired for the event. Despite the potential in the car, Tolman turned to the highly successful British chassis constructor Reynard. They had a small monopoly in open-wheel races in the 80s and 90s, ranging from small Formula Fords 
to high-speed missiles in the American Car Championship. They took the car and completely transformed it into something barely resembling the original MG Metro shape. Now dubbed the T89 Enduro, it weighed 70 kilograms less and featured a bigger 4.2 liter V8, producing almost 260 horsepower, 30 more than the previous year. The crew was more prepared too, as alongside the support truck, there was now a second high-speed support vehicle in the form of a modified Range Rover driven by Ted Tolman's son. The Range Rover got a false start in the event though, as Gary Tolman rolled it in the opening prologue stage. It briefly caught fire while upside down, but it was quickly put out. Slightly battered and bruised, it stopped the Dakar Rally far behind the T89, which it was supposed to tag along with. Luckily for them, the T89 didn't need any assistance in the first couple of stages. The preparations by Reinhardt and the lessons learned in the first two catastrophic attempts made the T89 into quite a competitive machine. Its light weight was favorable in the desert and its impressive speed might have been able to challenge the well-funded factory Peugeot effort. But while already having traveled further than the last two years, Tolman would once again not even make it to the halfway point. The high-tech T89 perhaps being a bit too high-tech, as an electronic issue prevented the car to start again. Third time wasn't a charm and the car was retired. Briefly, all hopes rested on the shoulders of the Range Rover, as that was still in the race. That did make it past the halfway point, but just like in the prologue, it caught fire again. And this time, it couldn't be saved. The two F1-related Dakar entries ended up both being surprisingly competitive, but eventually ended in similar fashion. If it weren't for the electrical gremlins and spontaneous fires that bore a bleak resemblance to the team's respective F1 cars, Tolman and perhaps Minardi most of all could have had an impressive rally rate pedigree. But just like their F1 title hopes, it just wasn't meant to be. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it and subscribe if you don't want to miss out on the next one.